Well, anti-white racism being promoted on college campuses and in the media used to be somewhat amusing maybe five years ago because it was so odd and crazy. Sadly, it was left unchecked and has metastasized into systemic anti-whiteism that now permeates schools, the government, entertainment, and social media. Of course, one of the biggest taboos of modern America is to dare say out loud that racism against white people, anti-whiteism, exists and is a growing problem, which is a large part of the reason that it's now accepted as normal in our society. It's helping the diversity, they say. Like when social justice warriors at a New York high school pressured administrators to shut down the production of the Hunchback of Notre Dame play in the name of diversity because the lead role was awarded to a white student after the auditions. The school district released a statement that said in part the cancellation was because of an attempt to be more inclusive and culturally responsive. And now some schools are even adopting a practice called cultural discipline, which means they're allowing black students to get away with causing trouble and handing out lesser punishments to them out of concerns that the school may be perceived as being racist. Since, well, more of them in certain school districts cause more trouble than other students for reasons you're not allowed to talk about, like more often than not being raised in fatherless homes. An editor at the Huffington Post once openly bragged on Twitter that their goal for the month was to publish pieces from less than 50% of white writers. Uber's chief brand officer wants more diversity, saying that there are too many white men who work for the company. All big tech companies are obsessed with diversity, which flies in the face of federal discrimination lawsuits that are supposed to prohibit companies from not hiring people based on race, but when it comes to discrimination against white people, everyone seems to think that it's okay. The Charity Commission, a nonprofit watchdog in the UK, encouraged charities to darken up because they didn't reflect the communities that they served after they determined that there were too many white people helping with local charities and they felt that they needed to promote diversity. Yes, too many white people helping out black communities was racist. <laughs> Speaking of the UK, the BBC thinks that the gun control movement in the United States involving the Parkland High School kids like David Hogg is too white. And some black people are apparently also upset that other anti-gun protesters used the phrase don't shoot, which was originally used by Black Lives Matter. So that's racist too. When black people complain about white people in general, the liberal establishment embraces the criticism as necessary and frames it as an important issue that white people need to address, no matter how wildly inaccurate or exaggerated the claims are. But when white people simply point out basic irrefutable facts about certain people, such as black men being less than 7% of the U.S. population but commit almost half of all murders, or that three quarters of black children are born out of wedlock, or that most black children don't have a father in the home, those statistics are labeled racist no matter the context or the purpose of pointing them out. MSNBC's Chris Hayes complained that President Trump's proposed immigration reform plan would have kept America predominantly white for five more years than expected because the left are determined to overthrow the white majority as soon as possible and they're furious that ending illegal immigration will slow down their agenda. It's expected to occur in 2045 at the rate things are going, by the way, but pointing that out without celebrating it as an amazing transformation of the country is, you guessed it, racist. During a speech denouncing Trump's plan and talking about how great immigrants are, Nancy Pelosi said that her grandson wished that he had brown skin because he sees people of color as special. One of the actors from Star Wars Rogue One, a guy named Ritz Ahmad, who played Bodhi Rook, thinks that the lack of diversity in television shows is alienating young people and driving them towards extremism and into the arms of ISIS. He's Pakistani and he believes that if young Muslims don't see characters who look like them on TV that they won't be able to connect with the show and might run off and join ISIS. Liberals are even complaining about the lack of diversity in spin class at the gym. Is your spin class too young, too thin, and too white? Asked the Washington Post. Now there's too many white people in spin class. The story recounted the horrifying experience of a black woman who signed up for a class in New York and on the first day found that she was the only black person there and cried that she didn't have another woman who looked like her and who understood her struggles. Obviously, she doesn't need a spin class. She needs a psychiatrist. 
It's getting harder to find actual racism against black people in America these days, since thankfully we've made amazing progress over the last 50 years, learning to live alongside one another despite our differences. But since incidences of anti-black racism have dramatically shrunk and racism is a business for liberals, they've invented a new term to describe the microscopic racism that they say still exists, microaggressions. And like bacteria, too small to see with the naked eye, racist microaggressions against people of color are supposedly everywhere. Psychology Today defines them as the everyday verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights, snubs, or insults, whether intentional or unintentional, which communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative messages to people based solely upon their marginalized group membership. And apparently every white person is still racist, whether they know it or not, because social justice warriors say the most well-intentioned white Americans have inherited the racial biases of their ancestors in the most harmful form remain outside the level of conscious awareness. Only white people are guilty of committing microaggressions, though, of course, being surprised that someone of Mexican heritage doesn't speak Spanish is a racist microaggression, and so is being wrong about an Asian person's heritage. For example, if you think that someone is Chinese, but they're actually Korean, <laughs> that's racist too. Expecting an Asian person to be smart is also one because that's a stereotype, they say. It's even considered a microaggression to tell a stranger Merry Christmas because they might be a Muslim or Jew. The Air Force Academy once apologized for committing a racist microaggression after they sent out a campus-wide email about maintaining a good personal appearance and used Michael Jordan as an example. He was never seen with his pants sagging below his waistline, the email noted, but that was offensive to certain people. Telling Air Force cadets not to walk around with their pants sagging halfway down their butt and their underwear showing like some thug on his way to the corner liquor store in the ghetto is racist. To highlight the double standards of Twitter's enforcement of their terms of service, over the years, a conservative using the account meme underscore America started the hashtag verified hate campaign, which consisted of doing searches on Twitter for racist, anti-white, and violent threats posted against white people by users with verified accounts, the ones with the little blue check marks next to their names. They uncovered hundreds of anti-white and threatening tweets from BuzzFeed employees, writers for the Huffington Post, the New Yorker, the Daily Beast, Vice News, and other mainstream publications, which were all ignored by moderators and allowed to stay up on the platform. Screenshots were taken of the tweets, which were also labeled with an accompanying URL from an internet archive link to prove that they were real in the event that the users deleted them after they were called out, as they always do, and then tried to claim that they were photoshopped. In the ultimate ironic twist, about one week after the hashtag verified hate campaign was started by meme underscore America, their Twitter account was banned for supposedly violating Twitter's terms of service. Of course, this was before Elon bought Twitter, but we're living in a society where the Southern Poverty Law Center, a hate group really, dedicated to harassing conservatives and the ADL, which operates in the same fashion, have literally deemed the phrase, it's okay to be white, to be a white supremacist slogan. I would say more, but the thought police may be watching, so you really should read my books like Liberalism Find a Cure to get my complete and uncensored analysis of what's really going on, or get Hollywood propaganda how TV, movies, and music shape our culture in paperback from Amazon.com, or download the ebooks from any of the major ebook stores, Kindle iBooks, Nook, or Google Play, and of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below, so click it and head on over there and check them out. <laughs>